Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and today I need to talk about a trend which I do find quite worrisome in the recent, well, time ever since Microsoft Flight Simulator has been released to be honest. And this trend is about the lack of proper product manuals with basically any add-on. Now there have been a few attempts of providing better manuals namely the Leonardo MD-80, which has a really good one. And then there has also been the Aerosoft Twin Otter and their CRJs, which had kinda decent manuals, but um, on those we already start slowly going south down. And then we have those highly complex and enjoyable add-ons, like the PMDG 737, like the Phoenix A320, like the Inibuilds A310, and most recently, the infamous ATR-72, in which I'm actually recording this video. Now, in the ATR there's simply no manual at all available. In the PMDGs there is a tutorial flight and an introduction manual, which kind of explain a couple of the um, features that the developer has added, but nothing of the basic aircraft. Like 10 years ago, PMDG would deliver their aircraft with the real-life flight crew operations manuals of their aircraft. Likewise, going back to some other add-ons 10 years back, there have been really extensive manuals with them, covering several hundred pages, covering the systems and how to operate the aircraft. Now, in the most recent days, however, the trend for manuals really went down and down and down until it reached the very bottom with the ATR, which simply did not ha have a manual at all. Now, why am I recording this video just now? Well, because, especially in the ATR, if you operate the airplane the way it is meant to be operated, it is a really enjoyable and fun aircraft to fly. And you don't really encounter that many issues during a normal flight following the standard operating procedures either. However, how are you supposed to know the standard operating procedures when there is simply no manual published that would line them out? The same goes for highly complex aircraft like the Fenex A320 for example, which comes with a little knowledge base, but that knowledge base doesn't explain any of the systems. There is a rough tutorial and uh, how to operate the Airbus guide, but that is all really basic stuff. There is nothing among those manuals that would explain to me, for example, how to do a certain type of approach, how to deal with certain issues, and so on. Before the time where PMDG included the actual airplane manuals in their products, they used to write lengthy manuals, and not sure if you know it, but the name PMDG actually derives from Precision Manual Development Group because that is what they started on. However, even the PMDG manuals have really gone down southbound. Now, here is my simple question to the developers. You guys are putting a lot of effort into your products. You guys are putting really a lot of nice features in there. You guys are putting a lot of hidden features in there. But how am I supposed to know they exist? How am I supposed to know pretty much anything? It shouldn't be the customer's obligation almost to start searching across several discords, several forums, and a thousand different ways of communication of pretty much any developer only to find some information on how to operate their aircraft. It cannot be the new standard that you have to go into a knowledge base, into a couple different PDFs which only include some limited pieces of information. There has to be a proper and good product manual available which makes it possible for the user to read up on, ah, this is how I need to do things. Let's take the ATR as another recent example. Now, in the ATR, there are a lot of good features, and the community at the moment where I'm recording this, three days after release, is really split about this airplane. Now, why is that? Well, we can only guess about the reasons, but looking into the comments under the tutorials I did, looking in my Discord channel and looking in the Microsoft Flight Simulator forums, I see one ever-repeating problem, and that is that users do not fly their aircraft correctly. But how could we blame them if nobody tells them how to fly them correctly? The ATR has a set of avionics which is really similar to that 
set that the Airbus has. But there are subtle differences, and there are important differences there. One of them includes that a lot of people say the ATR would be peep just because you cannot enter airways. Well, you can, but you need to know how. And that is the overall problem here. You cannot know how to enter those airways if nobody tells you to. How is a user supposed to know that you can simply enter the blank spot of the airway page, click the LSK next to it, and it brings up a list of airways? How can the user know that he shall do the same when selecting the exit point of those airways? And if you did that, you can enter as many airways if you want, and the airplane is not going to freeze up. If you, however, use the Airbus method of entering things, then the thing is going to freeze up. Now, this video is not about discussing how something like that can slip across the beta testers. However, what I do want to point out at this point is that the testers who've probably flown the plane will mostly have been real-life pilots, and they will for sure have been people who dealt with the airplane for a lengthy period in time. And during that lengthy period in time, they used correct operating procedures on it. Now, I'm not saying that entering airways and waypoints directly is not a correct operating procedure, but I am saying that if it is the desired procedure by the developer to do things like this and that, then there needs to be a manual that is going to explain exactly this to, use, to the user. I found myself making tutorial videos, but I've also found a lot of other people into the position where you really need to gather information on aircraft based on 100 different YouTube videos. Now, what kind of resource is it to gather your entire information about an airplane from a YouTube video? Now, I'm one of those guys doing those videos, so I know from first-hand experience that in order to do such a video, you are time-limited. People won't watch it if it's longer than 10 or 15 minutes. You are limited to the information you can put into there. You are limited in many, many ways. And while others and myself are doing our utmost best to cover the normal operating procedures of the aircraft, the simple fact remains that if somebody needs quick access to some sort of information, it cannot be that you have to go to YouTube and gather those videos only to eventually watch a 15-minute video that is going to explain everything. No, you have to have such things readily available in the manual so that you can look them up while you fly the airplane. Otherwise, and this is exactly what, in my opinion, we are seeing with the ATR at the moment, if you don't get proper instructions on how to fly the airplane, people start making up their own operating procedures and people start making up how to fly the airplane. Obviously, what people make up is rarely going to be entirely correct, so they fly their airplane incorrectly, they end up messing it over, because hand on heart here from a real life pilot, the vast majority of flight simulator add-on are not as robust that they won't be totally torn apart if you simply press buttons without knowing what you're doing. And I'm talking with about all but two add-ons for Microsoft Flight Simulator over here. And even from those two add-ons, one of them I can tear apart if I want to. So all but those two add-ons, if you start randomly clicking buttons, you will eventually find yourself in a situation where the airplane is simply going to break apart, meaning the FMS is going to lock up or whatever. But you get where this is going. So, why am I creating a 10 minute video about my call for developers to do better manuals? Well, for the simple fact that it seems to be common nowadays for the developers to simply ignore the manual part, they build superb add-ons. There are add-ons which really have good systems. But if nobody knows how to operate them, how are we supposed to get the most out of them? How are we supposed to get anything out of them if all that we know about the add-on is what we learned by trial and error and by watching YouTube videos? So, if you're watching this, of, well, if you have found yourself in a situation like this where you've been flying an airplane, you needed to look something about it up, where you found yourself in a situation where you needed readily accessible information about your airplane, 
then I do ask you, go out to the developers, tell them you need proper manuals, tell them not only give me a small tutorial flight that's going to teach the most basic A to B flight following the magenta or green line all the time, but tell them to provide systems manuals, tell them to provide manuals that cover not only the most basic A to B flight, but maybe a little bit of background information. Now, even tell them that for aircraft that so desire, we need stuff like pitch and power tables. We need stuff like cruise power tables, climb settings, descent settings, and so on. All of this is stuff that real life pilots use as a very, very basic piece of information. And in Flight Simulator, I rarely see this available, if at all. In the vast majority of cases, you Google for the real-life operations manuals, which obviously are copyright protected. So if you are going to be 100% serious there, you are illegally downloading those, those real-life manuals. You are pirating them. But can it be true that it is necessary for flight simulators to pirate those real-life manuals just in order to get some sort of information about the add-on that they've just bought for the big bucks? I'm going to leave it at that. I'm signing off at this point and I see you all again on the next one. Thank you for watching. Do head out to the developers. Tell them that we need proper manuals if you feel that we need them. And thank you for watching. See you all around.